again. <laughs> Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Here. And Mayor Kaiser? Here. Would you all join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Uh, additions and deletions to the agenda. Staff has two changes to tonight's agenda based on a request from the appellant on item 9B. That item has been removed from the uh, agenda. That is the Capitola Bar and Grill Entertainment Permit Appeal. And again, on item, I, item 9A, the off-leash dog area, that item has been requested to be uh, continued based on the, uh, from the uh, project proponents. So those items have both been removed from the agenda. Great, thank you. We've got a couple presentations tonight. Uh, presentation A will be the 2022 Oral Health Report from Dientes. Hello, thank you so much for having me. My name is Sepi Tagbai and I'm a dentist and I'm the VP of Operations for Dientes Community Dental Care. You may know that Dientes is a nonprofit dental organization, organization serving Santa Cruz County. We have four clinics throughout the county and an outreach program that goes out to schools, nursing home, Janice, the Homeless Services Center. I'm here to talk to you about oral health, a very exciting topic, topic at least to me, and I only have eight minutes to do it, so I'm gonna talk really fast. Um, it's a big presentation, but I'll do my best to get through it, and I'm happy to answer your questions at the end. I was gonna say next slide, but. There we go. So I'm mostly here not to talk about Dientes, but about the Oral Health Access Steering Committee. So back in 2015, Dientes um, commissioned the first ever oral health needs assessment in our county. And we did that because we wanted to use that data to see how we could grow in the future and what the need of the community was. But when we got the report back, the need was so overwhelming that we decided we could not do it alone. So we put together the Oral Health Access Steering Committee, or I'm going to call it OHA from here on. Um, and we came together to try to take action. OHA included members of medical clinics, medical doctors, social services, the Office of Education, First Five, Cabrillo College. So we all came together as a coalition to try to solve the problems. Okay, some of our, um, this is the strategic plan that we came up with in 2016. Uh, our plan was to increase access for babies under two. It was to make kindergarten dental checkups mandatory in our county. And it was also to increase prevention and treatment capacity in, a, in the county. Later on, we added a fourth goal, which was to help pregnant people have more access to dental care. These are just some of the members of the OHA. Like I said, I have to go fast. So some of the activities that we took on was, for example, to do a first tooth, first birthday campaign. Some of you may know that it's recommended that a baby has their first checkup with a dentist by the time they have their first tooth or by the time they have their first birthday so that we can pre prevent, educate the parents, talk about nutrition, talk about fluoride. We did a kindergarten oral health screening campaign to make sure all the schools, uh, including in the city of Capitola, were doing those mandatory dental checkups before entering kindergarten. And we also, Dientes and Salud para la Gente, the other clinic in our community, we tried to expand treatment and prevention and clinical capacity by building more clinics, by training medical providers how to apply fluoride varnish, and just by hiring more dentists and mid-level dental providers. So we did a lot of work in those five years and the results have been amazing. 
before I get into the, some of the data to show our progress, I want to tell you that this data is only representing people in our community that have Medi-Cal. So it's not even talking about people who don't have insurance or are underinsured. For example, people on Medicare who have no dental coverage. So because of our, our work, there has been a 25 increase in um, people on Medi-Cal who were able to access a dentist. Because of our first tooth, first birthday campaign, there has been a 60% increase in zero to two year olds that are going to the dentist. We started around 30% 30, 30 and now we're up to 57%. When you compare that to the statewide average of 25%, you can see how well we're doing in our county. And then we had 75% more adults are going to the dentist. So we've made a lot of amazing progress, but it doesn't end here. In 2022, we decided to do a new needs assessment to see what else needed to be done. And we see that most people on Medi-Cal are still not accessing a dentist because there are no dental providers in our community who are willing to take it due to the low reimbursement rates. One of the most concerning findings was that even though we've made a lot of good progress for our really little kids, so zero to nine, we're peaking at 68% of them are going to the dentist between the ages of six and nine, it really starts to drop when we get to the preteen and to the teen years. As you can see, there's a huge drop. And throughout adulthood, it stays really low. Only 21% of people who are 21 and over are going to a dentist at least once a year. And like I said, about 75% of adults are still not going to the dentist because there's no avenues for access to care. Something that's really dear to my heart and I'm really passionate about is seniors. Um, it's really a shame for our seniors, only about 25% of them are accessing a dentist, and those are only the ones that have Medi-Cal. Most of our seniors in our community don't even have Medi-Cal, they have Medicare, and Medicare continues to not include dental as a benefit. Um, when it comes to seniors, oral health is really, really important. Most of them have gum disease, and gum disease not only impacts their ability to chew, to eat nutritious food, to have a lovely smile, it also makes them isolated and they're not participating in social activities. I see this in our clinics every day working with patients. And also it impacts their overall health. Gum disease is related to diabetes, to Alzheimer's, to heart complications, to a lot of overall health problems. We, I'm really happy to say that we've been looking at our work through a lens of um, equity and we're, for example, every campaign that we have done, we have done in English and Spanish. And as you can see, there's really no disparities when it comes to accessing dental care based on race or ethnicity. So what are we going to do moving forward, looking into the future? We're going to continue to keep our momentum with our first initial goals that we had, but we have some new focus areas. We're going to focus on preteens and teens, we're going to focus on people with diabetes, and we're going to focus on seniors. Uh, I have some great news, Dientes, you probably know that we just built a brand new clinic on Capitola Road. We're going to be able to serve 6,000 more patients out of that clinic. And Dientes and Salud para la Gente, we just were awarded a super competitive grant, a $5 million grant from Delta Dental to work with seniors in our community to improve access to care. Um, I know you guys have a really busy agenda and a lot of things to discuss, so I'm really, I feel really thankful that you allowed me to come here and to talk to you. And I know that the city of Capitola has been a big supporter of Dientes throughout the years. So I wanted to thank you for that also. And I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for that presentation. Are there any questions? Just as a quick one. Yeah. Is the um, new space open for visitors? I was able to co come to the, yes. the ribbon cutting, but is it open yes. to the public to come by? Yes, we are. 
And if you would like to set up a tour to have somebody walk you through it and explain things and tell you how we're planning on increasing access there, we're happy to set that up for you. I've included the report, the full report that you're probably not going to read this many pages, but also the smaller version and also my business card. So if any of you would like a tour, we're happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yes, thank you. I've driven by the new facility and it looks awesome. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you for all the work that you're doing for the community. Thank you. <laughs> all right thank you all right our second presentation tonight will be started off by yours truly this is a proclamation in honor of the woodworm party supply store it's their 50th anniversary this year um, so just a little background, the Woodworm Party Store, it's been a family owned and operated business within Capitola. Um, it rig originally opened up down in the village um, by Don Donna and John back in 1973. They originally sold wood products such as dollhouses, jewelry boxes, mug racks, and refurnished children's furniture, all handmade by John himself. Woodworm left the village and moved to their current location, which is up um, over by Knob Hill back in 1983. And they've sold a variety of goods since reopening there, such as tie-dye t-shirts, miniature and imported toys. Donna, a mother of five children, loved to throw parties and selling party supplies was a natural fit. Woodworm is currently owned and operated by John and Donna's oldest daughter, Sherry Robidoux. I hope I didn't butcher, thank you. Okay, <laughs> with help from her three children, Abby Stevens, Beth Pava, and Jason Robidoux, the store offers cake decorating classes, customized birthday cake creations, as well as traditional party supplies. They pride themselves on contributing to the community and have the goal of being a community leader and serving nonprofits throughout Santa Cruz County. Since 1973, Woodworm has donated to local schools and multiple nonprofit organizations. So therefore, I, Margo Kaiser, as the mayor of the city of Capitola, I hereby congratulate Woodworm Party Store on their 50th year anniversary. I thank them for their contributions to the community and for their efforts service oriented as a locally owned business. So huge congratulations to you guys. I have this lovely proclamation if you would like to receive it. You're more than welcome to. And if you'd like to say a few words, Not please do. Okay. <laughs> Not for everybody. I would like to say thank you for recognizing us. And my mom was able to be here from the start of the business. That's amazing. Yeah, Okay. Lovely milestones. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, so we'll go to item four, which would be our report on closed session. Are you going to do that? Or, oh, Sam. Hi. Hi. Great. Thank you. Any additional materials this evening? Staff did receive numerous correspondences for items 9B and correspondence for 9A. However, both of those items have been removed from tonight's agenda by staff. Copies of all correspondence received between publication of the agenda and um, prior to the items being pulled is available as a part of the agenda packet online. Awesome. Thank you. So we can move on to oral communications. Um, this is for members of the public. This allows time for you to address the council on any consite, consent items on tonight's agenda or any topic within the jurisdiction of the city that is not on our general government hearing this evening. You will have up to three minutes to speak.
I'm going to read uh, just one statement. This is by the former uh, state assemblyman, Willie Brown. This is an AP report. Um, Willie Brown, San Francisco Democrat, asked today that the Assembly Research Office study his proposal to abolish city and county governments. In his weekly address, uh, Brown suggested 58 counties and 445 uh, governments should be replaced with a few regional agencies. And I see nothing but you cooperating with this. Uh, there is also Leon Panetta, who created a, the most powerful lobby west of the Mississippi. If people don't know, look up Panetta Gate. Panetta gave military and policy information to a red Chinese communist spy named Hugh DeLacy. <clears throat> he belonged to a number of uh, spy rings, Silvermaster, Perlow, Ware, Sorge, and some other ones. Um, Panetta was uh, busy giving the uh, part of the Panama Canal away to the Chinese, both ports on both sides. Um, <clears throat> and he founded California Forward. His co-founder is Lenny Mandanka of a Committee for Economic Development. Uh, their organization advocates getting rid of 80% of the local governments. So you guys have actually ended up joining the parallel government, which is called a COG, a Council of Governments. It's AMBAG. It's funded uh, by the federal government, the state government, ICLE, which is the front for both the United Nations and the World Bank, and you attend it and you do not put on, you do not insist, I think um, Brown was a past president, um, but you don't insist it be on community TV, you're keeping the people in the damn dark. Uh, the uh, Bruce McPherson, put together the Futures Network. Here he is. He took tens of thousands of dollars from Katrina Lung, a triple Chinese communist spy, uh, front page U.S. News and World Report. Zach Friend, who's a supervisor, worked for two former registered uh, red Chinese lobbyists. Uh, these people have been integrated into uh, AMBAG and uh, great proponents uh, for it. Uh, also, uh, Hugh DeLacy, uh, has monuments on the courthouse steps, two of them. And the Community Foundation, uh, mostly funded by Packard, a member of the Trilateral Commission, and you can include uh, Diane Feinstein um, and other people um, that uh, are trilateralists. We heard about Diane Feinstein, so-called driver, that she got tricked, that he was a member of the Chinese, you know, the Chinese spy network. This is the Chinese man, Russell Lowe, when she was running for city council. They have been like that ever since. The newspapers are lying to you. You've got so much communist influence. Oh. Thank you. Your time is up. All right. Appreciate anyway, it. publish what's going on. Reject <clears throat> selling out uh, to the globalists. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Hello, I'm uh, Tom Parker. I live up on Grand Avenue, 306. Been there for 25 years and in Capitola for probably 50. Um, every day as I'm working in my garden, there's one person after another saying, what are they gonna do to this path? When are we gonna fix the path? What's the plan for the path? Uh, I don't know what the plan for the path is. I would like to find out if there's a plan for a plan or what we might do to contact somebody to help them find a plan for a plan for a plan. I'd like to have something move forward. I've listened to all this stuff on the, the, by the railroad track up there. I've, down on the path down here, seeing the president talking to everybody. I think we need to have a plan for our side of the neighborhood. Is there anything anybody can say to me about that? Um, staff, do we have any response on the Grand Ave pathway at the moment? I'm, I'm happy to provide an update if you want now, or would you like it? When yeah. the public comments over? That's fine. You can give it now. 
Okay. Uh, so the Public Works Department has contracted with a geologist that the city has used previously to evaluate the stability of the slope on Depot Hill, looking into what our op options are, and we have a hearing plan to come before council. Is it in May? In May, just talk about the options for the path. Okay. There's, uh, there's a plan to talk about it in May? There's a plan to talk about it in May. We're doing the preliminary work. We're having geologists evaluate the slope slope stability, and then we will be bringing that information with the, the decision points to council in May. This is the first I've heard about a plan for a plan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other members of the public? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having us here. We were expecting another people, but they're still working. Um, I live in 930 uh, Rosedale Avenue. And um, recently, we re uh, it's a mobile home park, and it's very nice neighbor. We all have like a lot of seniors, but uh, the owner of the land uh, recently increased the rent space in about 55, 58%. And uh, according to him, is because the, the lease expired. And uh, we like to know if you guys, you know, everybody can help us to support the AB 1035, which is a new uh, bill that is coming, but it's uh, allowing to the owner to stop increasing that much uh, in the rent space. And um, we are running out of time. We have no money to hire a legal uh, person. And I'm wondering if you can do something for us. And um, I would like to hear if um, there is any solutions. You know, we support all of you uh, when was the time for bots. So we asking for you to support us in this case. We are a small community. I don't know how many more communities are suffering this, but at this time, we really need your help. Thank you so much. Do you have any answer on that? Uh, something that you can tell us? It's on our consent agenda. Oh, it is on the consent agenda. Okay. So, um, we are fighting up against the Vieiras Enterprises that is very famous over here in, in Santa Cruz County. Oh, oh, it is already, okay. So yeah, it is actually on consent item F. So it will be voted on in tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is on our consent agenda, which is voted on in one motion, not each item at a time and uh, support for AB 1035 that you're talking about is on tonight's agenda. Oh, thank you so much. In the um, meantime, we going to have a meeting with this person very soon. We all the community, um, we are getting all together not to sign the new lease because it's gonna be about $358 all at once that he want to increase and it's highway robbery for us. So, I really appreciate that you support that. Thank you. Great, thank you. Hi, I, I also live at uh, 930 Rosedale <coughs> Avenue up at Cabrillo Mobile Home Estates. And I am also, and, and many of us are very much hoping that you will in fact vote to support AB 1035 because it, it, it makes it more fair for everybody. The, the park owners do get increases, but they can't increase to the point where it essentially can wind up driving a lot of people out of their homes and potentially even into homelessness ultimately. And, and you know, people who've invested a lot of their money in their homes can wind up losing a lot if, if it's not supported. So thank you for considering it and, and very much hope that you will vote for it. Yes, thank you. Any other members of the public? 
Do we have anybody online? Okay. Great. Well, thank you those that spoke this evening. We'll take it to staff and council comments. Do you have any comments from staff? I think Chloe has one comment for us this evening. Great. Hi. Hello, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to announce very quickly that the much beloved citywide garage sale is happening this month. It's Saturday, April 22nd, and the public can sign up online. It's a very simple form, and the map will be prepared and available to the public, printed out and online the Friday before the event. So that's the 21st of April. So spread the word, and um, I know that's really popular in the community. So just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. It's from staff. Okay, any council comments? I have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like for staff to come back with an update on the chief's council that we discussed and prioritized um, a, gosh, a year or two ago. Um, and then the second, would be an update on, I know we've done re, uh, outreach to the Rosedale residents um, in the park um, with this item potentially passing. Um, I'd like to see what next steps or I know staff was gonna talk to them um, and maybe not just in a Friday update, but um, for the public to, to see. And then lastly, I had a great meeting with United Way and our um, captain, Ryan, on the star card, a youth star card program that we implemented when we're having some issues down in the village with youth. And so we all met today and there's gonna be discussion or there was discussion about um, coming up with a new program and having an event at the Capitola Mall. Um, so um, we should be hearing more about that in the next few months. So I just wanna let all of you know that it's still thriving and, and um, happening. So thank you. Can I have one? One point of clarification on the Cabrillo item, are you proposing a agenda item for a future council meeting? The mobile home part? Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's hear about it from staff and see what's been going on. I think okay. it, it, we've had enough community um, come visit. It'd be nice to hear, hear the discussions that have been taking place. Thank you. Yeah. Got a couple comments as Great. well. Um, bear with me, I've got a couple and usually I, I don't, so uh, go figure our, our <laughs> shortest meeting. I just want to yeah, <laughs> okay. keep us keep us going. Um, so there's a couple fun transportation things I want to share. One is that the Metro Transit District's Youth Cruise Free program is in effect. It's a one year pilot program that allows uh, youth from K <clears throat> through 12 to ride free on the buses. Um, if you're between I believe it's uh, eight and 12th grade, you need to show a student ID. If you're under that, they, um, if you don't have an ID, you can go to any of the transit centers in Watsonville or on Pacific and get one. Um, and then our youth can go uh, for free on our transit system, which is really exciting. And in the same vein, Metro also has the one ride at a time program going on right now um, for where it will donate $10 for every 25 transit trips that you log through the Go, Go Santa Cruz County platform. And those $10 will be donated either to the Monterey Bay Na National Marine Sanctuary Foundation or the Bay of Life Fund, um, both two really important um, nonprofit organizations. And so you can learn more about that at gosantacruzcounty.org, both really important programs um, from, from Metro and, and our partners. And then also in transportation world, um, next week there's gonna be an exciting groundbreaking for some multimodal transportation improvements, including uh, bus on shoulder and auxiliary lanes between 41st and uh, Soquel Avenue. The groundbreaking will be on April 19th at the Pure Water Soquel location uh, in Chanticleer. Um, then next, not next week, week after April 26th, the Community Action Board is holding their Community Action Plan Town Hall. It will be virtual and you can learn more about that on their website. And it's an opportunity for the public to give input on uh, the work of the Community Action Board and how best to serve the community. I'm almost done, I promise. Um, next, I would like to ask staff to return with the potential for the council to uh, direct the mayor to sign a letter of support for Assembly Bill 953. 
That's a voluntary vessel speed reduction and sustainable shipping program. Um, the Air Resources Board is uh, suggesting it. It's uh, co-authored by our Assemblywoman, Gail Pellerin, and it's a voluntary vessel speed reduction, but it's known to lower greenhouse gas emissions and lessens or prevents whale strikes. And as a coastal city on the edge of a national marine sanctuary, I think it's something that we should consider supporting. Uh, the citywide yard sale, I wanted to sign up for it, but I can't, uh, I just went to the site and it, the form itself isn't showing up. It says fill out the form below and then there's no form below. Um, and I apologize that I chose this um, platform to bring that up, but I was gonna call about it earlier and completely forgot until Chloe <laughs> mentioned it, so thank you. And then finally, uh, I just wanna comment on the importance of everything on our consent agenda. Um, quite often it's just routine stuff and approving checks and all that, which is also important. Um, but tonight in particular, the completion of the 41st Avenue and Claire's traffic calming activities is really exciting. The officer wellness grant, the roadway stabilization grant, and of course the mobile home rent control uh, approval of, of signing a letter of support uh, for AB 1035. I think these are all really important issues that although they're on consent, it doesn't mean they're not important. It just means that I think um, it, it shows the importance of all the things that we do here on council and not just the ones that are on a regular agenda item. All right, I talked as fast as I could. Thank you for your that patience. Was great. Any other comments? Okay, great. So that will move us to consent items. So these are um, going to be enacted by one motion in the form listed below without any separate discussion. Uh, do we have a motion to move the consent items? I'll move consent items 8A through F. I'll second. Great, we have a first and a second. Maybe take a roll call, please. Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. All right, passes unanimously, thank you. And um, looks like our nines have been removed, so we will jump down to item 10, which is adjournment. So uh, thank you everybody for joining this evening and uh, be well, enjoy the sunshine, and happy Thursday. Thank you. Bye, Samantha. Amy. I know it's hot here. Okay.